Hey everyone, in this video we will discuss the difference between identity and access management policies versus bucket policies and access control lists for S3. So let's start. So we'll start with IAM versus S3 bucket policy and when to use which. So IAM policies, when do you use IAM policies when access is allowed or denied on AWS resources. So with IAM policies you can define it on other resources as well, not necessarily just S3 buckets. And once access is defined, it can be granted to users, groups, or roles. And then that is how access works. S3 bucket policies are attached to S3 buckets. They are not at a universal resource level in AWS. It defines allow or deny action for an object. So let's say you've got a text file. You can define who can access it, who has read privileges on it, who can delete those files. Uh, bucket policies apply to all objects in the bucket. So that's uh, where S3 bucket floats. Sorry, S3 policies float or are used. Now, when to use IAM versus uh, S3 bucket policies. So, IAM policies, as I've already told you, that you can define access to multiple resources or multiple services using IAM policies. So, for services other than S3, you can use it. Uh, let's say you want to uh, have multiple S3 buckets and you want to define access via one at one place. You can use IAM policies. Otherwise, you have to copy and paste that uh, S3 bucket policy to numerous buckets and becomes cumbersome. You prefer access control via IAM. However, there is a size limit of 5 KB on the IAM policy. So if your policy grows over that, you might want to uh, manage access uh, via S3 buckets. So when to use S3 bucket policies, you want to grant cross account access to your S3 environment without using IAM roles. So let's say you've got another AWS account and you want to gr grant privileges to uh, let's say file in account one uh, needs to be given. So let's say there is an account two which needs access to the files in account one S3 bucket. So you can use S3 bucket policies for that using, and you can do it using cross, cross account access. You prefer to control access via S3 and there's a size limit of 20 KB. So essentially if IAM policies uh, are restrictive because of their size limit, you can transfer to the S3 uh, bucket policies. So uh, when so when, if you're asking a question like, what can this user do? IAM policy is a better place to go and define access. But if you're thinking more in terms of who can access the bucket, you need to. It's it's probably better to go and define uh, the policy in an S3 bucket. So define depending on the kind of questions you're asking might just give you a indication of uh, what you need to use. Uh, let's go to access control lists now. So access control lists are legacy access control mechanism. And it, uh, at the moment, uh, AWS recommends using IAM policies and not access control lists. But if access control lists have been defined by you in the past and they work fine, just keep using them. Uh, and access control list is attached to S3 bucket and defines accounts or groups that are given access to S3 bucket and the type of access. Uh, so this is just a sample S3 bucket policy and you can see the principle is defined. So in this case, you've defined Alice and then you've defined root and they need to have access to my bucket. But, and you can see the IAM policy is different. There's no principle because essentially you will attach this to the principle. So that's the difference between an IAM bucket policy and an S3 bucket policy. I hope you find this video useful and thanks for watching this video. In this video, we've covered the IAM policy, we've covered the S3 bucket policy, and we've covered the access control list. Let me know if you would like me to take any specific topics. Cheers, bye.